first here as we get set for the opening kick. Last game of the regular season here in the XFL. Seattle boots thing away. Both teams can release once it is caught. Here goes Vegas on the return. Sin Q Sweeting over that left side, crossing the 30. Bring them out, bring them out. Vegas Vipers get the ball first. Jalen McClendon was third string to start the season. Now he's the starter. Yeah, third string. And, and the guy that really struggled to get on the field throughout his right, collegiate career, cool. first at NC State, then at Baylor. And now this opportunity has presented itself. And this offensive staff and head coach Rod Woodson believes that he could be the cornerstone right, of the future offensive football for the Vegas Vipers. Fumble, first play of the game. McClendon gets it back. Miscommunication results in a gain of one. Got to be careful with some of the backfield action and the mesh point here. 27B, 27B. Got a nice lucky bounce backed up on your own 35-yard line. Very fortunate there for Jalen McClendon. After the fumble on first down, second and nine for this offense for Vegas. John Lovett, the running back, is in there because Rod Smith is out. He was the workhorse all season for Vegas, but an opportunity for Lovett here today. He coming? And I think it's important that they establish the run game, whether it's through Lovett or whether it's through Jalen McKen McClendon. Force Seattle defensively to have to defend all 11 players in the run game for Las Vegas. Starting three Q, double bubble. First chance for these fans here at Lumen Field to get loud. Third and one. McClendon keeps it himself, and he will rush for the first down. Really like this play call. You bring in the extra blocker, an 89 right there, pull around with the guard scheme, 75's pulling around, and now you've got an extra hat offensively because the quarterback is the runner of the football. Nah, That's good. a numbers advantage for Vegas in the run game. May force pin, Seattle to pin. bring an extra defender down. Here we go. Set up. What are you? What's up? Vegas first and 10 from their own 46. Sandoff is Sin Q Sweeting. And Sweeting. Maybe a loss. Mikhail Wright with the big tackle. Let's go trips right. 33 swap. Trips right swap. 33 dart spot. 33. Hey, 33. 33. Trips right. 33 swap. 33 swap. 33 swap. No gain on first down, second and 10. Seattle showing blitz. Here comes the pressure. And McClendon had a sidearm it just to get rid of it. Bryce Thompson was there on the pressure. Got some pressure, free rusher coming off the edge, times it perfectly. And this is an RPO. You had 33, which is their zone to the left, or you got the flat route out here and you just missed him because he's under duress with the defender in Jalen McClendon's face. Sometimes it's not about the sack or the hit. It's about altering the throw. Go. Got to give McClendon credit, though. Tonight. Realizing the rush got rid of it. Third and ten. Here comes the pressure again. Throws to the outside. Incomplete. Over through Geronimo Allison. Jalen McClendon's going to wish he had this one back. He's got Allison on the deep out route. He's got enough time to stand in there and deliver this ball. He's just high. Boy, that would have... Been a nice completion on third and ten. Yeah. Some early down jitters. Get him to settle down a little bit. But, boy, you see the arm talent there from Jalen McClendon, why Rod Woodson loves him so much. So the opening drive of the game, Vegas will punt it away. Michael Carrizosa with a high spiral. Kelvin McKnight will field it inside the five. What can he do on this return? Not much. Tripped up as he crosses the ten. Ben DiNucci just seems like he's been more and more comfortable in this offense. He is just lighting it up now. He is. This number right there is a bit concerning still. Obviously, you don't want to be careless with the football, but he'll make some plays where he Here pulls a Let's rabbit out of the Start hat. Start this thing off the right way. 880 on two. Ready. And, and has really made his fair share of spectacular plays, not just with his arm, 
but with his legs. He's one of the most deceptive runners in the XFL at the quarterback position. Set, go! On first down, empty backfield, setting up the screen. That's Josh Gordon. Gordon, you know he's got wheels. He is bumped out of bounds. They wanted a flag. Nothing comes. First down after a gain of 13. Nice little pitch and catch, throwing right into the pressure. It's exactly what you want to do offensively. Um, 860 on two, ready. Ben DiNucci, another former NFL guy back in 2020, a seventh round draft pick for Dallas. He learned behind Dak Prescott. Hot! Hot! First and 10, empty backfield. Across the middle, back to Josh Gordon. These two have found quite the team. Again, a 12. And such a big bodied target. You get him coming across the middle on the slant route in such a right, wide catch six, radius. Last time these two teams met back in week three in Vegas. Seattle got the win. Gordon, what a Here monster game he had. Yeah. Wham, one, two. Acrobatic. Huge play down the sideline that ended up being the difference in the football game. Looks like we should have run here. We heard wham from Seattle. Danucci sets up the screen back to Gordon. And you talk about that play that won at Stormy. We all remember Ben Danucci on the mic after that play. Oh, man. He was going down the sideline, screaming at the top of his lungs, just like a, a noise that he said he probably couldn't replicate if he tried at this point. It went viral. He said when he got back to the locker room, he had more text messages about his reaction than the play itself. But he told me, hey, Gordon is like a create a player in Madden. He even told him the first time he met Josh Gordon, he said, dude, I had you on my fantasy team. What are you doing here? But hey, let's get back to the league together. <laughs> I love it. First three plays were to Gordon. This time it's Philip Lindsay. Lindsay keeps those legs churning. The former Denver Bronco, he's got a first down, a gain of nine. Here was the play back in week three. Yeah, look at Ben DiNucci just throwing it up. Give the big guy a shot. You make the adjustment, and then you're able to backstep, cross back, and off Josh Gordon goes. Now listen to Ben DiNucci. <laughs> he's the joker. What would you call that sound? A high-pitched giggle. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. Set, go! Uh, uh. First and 10 after the Lindsay run. Another screen. This time is set up for Tuma Payout. The big tight end, rumbling, has another first down, and Seattle moves the chains again at 12. Take a look at those numbers right now. That's the only time in the XFL that you've seen this type of offensive output in the run game from a what receiving target. And then obviously at the quarterback position. And this is where Seattle started to get hot. The enthusiasm and the confidence and the momentum has carried them to this point with an opportunity to earn a playoff berth. Danucci's a perfect 4-4 four, four to start this game. Hands this one off. TJ Hammonds, he's still on his feet. Seattle, they're picking up extra yards after contact this first drive. They're doing a really nice job finding some little creases. See June Jones there. Home to spread left. Home Denver to Stair spread deep. left. Here we go. Home to spread left. Here we go. Denver stare. Denver, Denver stare on two. Denver. I love a little Tom to spread left. Yes. Yes. Set go. Ah. Four wide on second and two. They give it back to Hammonds. And he finds a crease over that right side. That's enough for a first down. You know, I think the one thing that we've got to keep an eye on today is there, there's a mental challenge, I think, for Seattle on offense. They can't get in the mode that, oh, we've got to score on every drive. We've got to score on every play. We have to hit that 34-point mark. If they get caught up in that, it's going to be problematic. Just run the offense, be methodical, and the plays will come your way. Under seven minutes to play here in this first quarter. No score. Danucci looks for the swing pass. That's to Hammonds. 
bumped out of bounds. It will be a yard short. DJ Calhoun with the stop, but they picked up nine. They're just getting chunk play after chunk play. Well, listen, they're taking what the defense gives them. And sometimes it's been in the run game, and you see Jacor Pearson heading into the locker room, and, and that's not good news. That's one of the Bronco. most explosive Bronco. players Bronco. in the XFL. One of the guys that actually came out of the offseason showcases the camp and combine to give players an opportunity. He's a prime example. Hunt. On second and one. Hammonds cannot turn the corner. He's going to be stopped for a loss there. Maurice Smith got in the backfield. A loss of five. It's a nice job leveraging the football outside in. Stretching it to the sideline by Vegas Helm on defense. Helm to spread right. Helm to spread right. 90 prop spread X right. levels. Prom 90 X prop levels. X levels. 90 on two. Ready. 90. Tenth play of this opening Real. drive for Seattle coming up. This will be the first yeah. third down of the ball game for them. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Third and six. Four-man rush. Danucci, he is flushed out to his right, scrambling on the run, and he overthrows everybody. Maximilian Roberts was chasing him down from behind. Same shit we talked about. This is where Danucci's athleticism comes into play. So instead of this being a negative play or a sack that really pushes him back from a field goal attempt standpoint, he's able to evade, get out, and get the ball out of his hand, live to play the next down. But it's field goals open, so. instead of touchdowns line. for Seattle. That's something that cannot happen tonight if they hope to score a lot of points. Dominic Eberly, his 39-yard field goal attempt is no good. It's interesting. Everyone knows they got to put up numbers. Stormy, how did that affect the betting lines today? Yeah, well, you see that 10 and a half point spread on your scorebook there. Seattle was an eight and a half point favorite all week long. That was until yesterday when the Battle Hawks won at margin. I got, ooh, got an interception. Oh, almost. No, it was oh, dropped. Almost. That was Bryce Thompson. He was looking at the end zone first. Stormy, keep it going. Almost. Well, yeah. So, like I said, the, the spread changed once the Battle Hawks won the way that they did at Orlando. They needed to win big, and they did put up 51 points, a league high. Better saw how much that motivation influenced St. Louis down the stretch and bet accordingly this game with Seattle in that same situation. So, oddsmakers made the adjustment, and upwards of 75% of the betting handle is on the Sea Dragons today. Stormy, after this play, I'm going to come back to you with another question run on the ground this is John Lovett nothing doing so stormy I, I know with Vegas particularly in the first half all year long that's been their best football they have not been able to be a team that can finish in the second half do you like the plus I think you said plus six prior to the game plus with six Seattle and a half. or yeah. excuse me yeah with Vegas yes I love that that was my favorite bet of this game coming in was a plus six and a half back-to-back -back weeks Vegas has had a halftime lead and let it slip away they've led Orban tied after two quarters in seven to nine games this season. Well, Jalen McClendon's going to have to complete a pass. He has not completed a pass yet so far. Here on the second drive, third and six. Had a guy, but take it out. Whoa, Jeff Bidet thought he had it. But well, Mikhail Wright says, uh-uh, have some of this. Wow, this is a shot. Jalen McClendon fires this ball in there, and it's timed up perfectly by Mikhail Wright. To jar that ball loose and now Seattle with another opportunity to get the ball back and you know we talk about that magic number the playoff magic number of 34 that last drive for Seattle had 10 plays 66 yards but it took six minutes and 24 seconds off the clock and no points got to get points if you're Seattle if you're going to drive it that long Arizona punts it away to McKnight McKnight from the 25 is tackled immediately Let's bring in Harry Douglas. Harry, you've been inside an NFL locker room. You are on the sideline right now for Seattle. How are they handling all the emotions to start this one? Right now, the guys are doing good, going through their plays, out there balling out on the field, especially that defense. But I will tell you guys, being a formal player, these type of things are difficult. And the best way to honor Chris is to go out there and make your plays and play hard and fight for your brothers. Football is a community. It's a brotherhood. So when you get an opportunity to play for one of your brothers, you want to do your best. Yeah, and Harry, football's a hard game. It's hard enough when everything's going your way. And then when you deal with sadness and loss, um, you've you got to use that in a way to motivate and create some positivity. Hot, hot. Danucci after the incompletion, second and 10, throws across the field to a steady receiver. 
Damian Willis. Now, Harry, Seattle already had one receiver go down as we see Damian Willis is down. What happened to Jacor Pearson earlier? Yes, he had a left wrist injury, went in to got x-rays. The x-rays came back negative. He got the wrist taped up, and he's back there on the field right now. All right, but we do see Willis is down after making that catch for Seattle. And, and Tom, one of the biggest reasons why Seattle has done so well in the second half of the season, this receiving core has been explosive. It's been explosive, and it hasn't all been all about Josh Gordon. It, it's Jacor Pearson who's emerged. Damian Willis has emerged. Blake Jackson's been a, a go-to guy. And, 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 I, and again, I want to go back to Jacor Pearson because, you know, not everybody's just going to go into a draft pool of a supplemental league like the XFL and get drafted. You might have to actually go out and prove yourself in a camp or combine setting, which is why the showcases for the XFL are so pivotal. And that man right there, Jim Hazlitt, I remember prior to the season telling me about Jacor Pearson. He said, man, we had him at a showcase, and he ran a blazing fast 40 time. And then we watched him for a couple of plays, pulled him aside and said, you know what? You go ahead and just sit over here. We, we've seen enough out of you because we don't want anybody else to see you. But we, we think we've got something in you. And now we're probably going to be looking at him potentially signing a future NFL contract. Now you see Pearson back on the field as Willis is being helped off the field. XFL semifinals next weekend, Saturday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN2. Also Sunday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ESPN. Both are on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus, so you can watch it anywhere. How incredible has this season got? I mean, it feels like 10 weeks just flew by. It, it, it's flown by. And you, you, you look at that South Division championship. All the teams are at the hub there in Arlington. They played in Arlington. And then now they're just going to play again all over again. And uh, there's a lot of familiarity between those two teams as we've got third and sex right in front of us. And Damian Willis does not look like he's feeling very good. So the medical staff will attend to Willis as he has helped off the field. It'll be a third and six coming up. Danucci so far today, six for eight, 55 yards, but he has, has hit four different receivers. What does he come up with here on third down? Vegas showing blitz, they only rush four. Danucci throws off his back foot. It's a jump ball, incomplete. Jordan Vesey went up. Jamar Summers was right there with them, defending for Vegas. I thought, yeah, I thought I did. I, yeah. Listen to Ben Danucci talking there with, with June Jones. Try and stop, go up and elevate. And I, I think you've got to extend in that, in that type of scenario with, with BC. The cradle catch and jump, go up and extend above your head and take the ball away. But Ben Danucci, that's the one thing about him. He's a gunslinger. He's a riverboat gambler. But sometimes he also throws off of his back foot and just kind of flicks it. And I think he lost a little bit of power on that throw. Cameron Izalek with the high punt to Matthew Sexton. Fields it at the 30 and will call for the fair catch. Did you say riverboat gambler? Oh, yeah. And you love those guys, right? That's what makes Ben Ducci so much fun to watch. Because you sit there and he'll he'll pull something out of nowhere and you'll go, man, that was unbelievable. But then you know what he'll do? He'll do something to tick you off. And you have to learn to live with the good versus the bad because the bad the good's gonna be really, really good. And you love, you love Ben Danucci's competitive temperament. He loves to play the game of football. Well, I'll tell you what, Vegas is playing spoiler role right now. Yep. Because not only does Seattle have to win, they have to put up at least 34 points. There's a point differential on the tiebreaker with St. Louis. Love it in the backfield. He will get the carry on first down, weaving his way through that hole, picks up five yards. The stop by Thompson. He referenced that number, and, and we're going to talk about it. 34, 34. Well, the first quarter clock is not helping that number because this quarter has gone fast. And Stormy did say she liked the first half plus six and a half for Vegas. It's looking good right now. Second and five. They go back to the ground. Love it again. Maybe picked up two. It'll set up third down. Let's go 11, 11, 11. Hey, 11, 11. 
right hand. Here we go. Let's go. Joker left. Let's Joker short. left. Eight, eight short. Seven. Joker left. Eight short. Eight short. Eight Show right. over 46. Oh, no. Show Tell over right 46. Hey, 50, 50, 50. Show over 46. 50, 50 burns. Eight rail. Third and six for Vegas. McClendon scanning, pocket closing, still on his feet, trying to spin out, and he's dropped. Just unimaginable. McKnight receives that punt inside the 20. Trying to reverse field, but he doesn't get there. Only a gain of two on the return. So Ben DiNucci will come back out. How does he get this offense going for Seattle? Again, I don't think you can be greedy. You don't have to worry about the number 34 and, and having to score points. Because if you start, you got a if you start pressing, take games, take games, take games. Yeah, this side. you're right, going to start right. making errors. You're right, going to take right. risks. 790 max, Hank. H long, F check on two, ready. But I do think F -check. that they're going to have to start running the football a little bit so that they can create some opportunities max. for explosive for plays down there. Set, go! Hot, hot. Check, Nucci, pressured out of the pocket, and will throw it away, incomplete. Charlie. Kelvin Pickney, Jasheem Martin, were there chasing down Danucci. I know, I did, yeah. Uh. Here, <laughs> Danucci there talking to his tight end, and he actually talked to him while he was evading the rush, trying to get him set up on the check down. You see number 89 right there. Come on. Benanucci in the moment, directing traffic while the live bullets are flying by. 60, George on two. Trips right, trips right, trips right. Trips right, trips right, 60, TJ! Time out. Trips right. First charge timeout. I know, trips right. Trips right. So Seattle calls timeout. The nine-part docuseries, Player 54, continues with an all-access look at XFL players and coaches. Episode 7 premieres on Wednesday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN2. All episodes are available on ESPN+. I've really enjoyed watching Player 54, getting to know these players on a different level, seeing them more comfortable with the cameras week after week. It's been incredible. It's been incredible, and it's, and it's, it's so fun to see them interact and how important the game is right and and without what we are watching and what we are experienced over the last 10 weeks there isn't a player 54. Danucci off for the timeout throws off his back foot a dangerous throw was looking for Gordon Deontay Anderson jumped that route on defense. Deontay Anderson makes a great play here See Josh Gordon, he's going to take an inside release, bend it over to the sideline. Anderson just undercuts it. I've been impressed with Las Vegas on defense. They've, they've allowed the ball to be thrown underneath, but then they've tackled in space. And they have not been able to, uh, they have not given up a big play through the air. Vegas is locked down so far on intermediate and deep routes. Third and long for Seattle. Sidearm completes underneath. Spin move. What? Jackson. And he gets out of bounds short of the first down. That's where they're coming from. That's where the guy's coming from. That's where the guy's coming from. Quarterback. Oh my God. Do what the fuck you supposed to do. Offense a little out of sync for Seattle. Again, there hasn't been anywhere to go for, go with the football except some of the underneath throws. But when you get in third and long, you're going to have to be able to manage some completions at or beyond the sticks. Another three and out for Seattle. Nizelec with a high hanging punt to Sexton. Sexton, this one will try to return it, but can't get through that seam. So Jalen McClendon will come back out at quarterback. Started third on the depth chart. It was Luis Perez, his job to start. He got traded away a few weeks ago. Brett Hundley, the former Packer, he had his opportunity. 
And now it's the youngster, Jalen McClendon. And when I asked Rod Woodson, I said, how come McClendon hasn't had much playing time, either in college or pro ball? He said, I don't know. I can't speak for other coaches, but I know he has it. Well, he certainly has a high ceiling for development because it, it, he hasn't played very much. And these opportunities that he's had here has proven his worth that his production can match his physical attributes. They start this drive on the ground and love it. Love it just picks up a yard. I, I, I here. How are you going to be three yards? Does that make sense? Get what you can get. Sure, right? right. Yeah. 28 pin open. I got you. Hey, 28 pin. You know, I love you, man. Yes, Fuck sir. You. I, am. I know. You're you yelling at me because you want to go. Yeah, yeah, I know. If I got you, you can split the motor from split it. Yeah. All right? That's awesome. That was Jackson who made the catch on the last drive hey, on that third down hey, play, hey, showing hey, some hey, love hey, to his coach. Now they're on the same page, it seems like. Second and nine for Vegas. And penalty flag. 56 with a false start. 56 false start. False start. Offense. Number 56. Five yard penalty. Second down. At the left tackle, Larry Williams, our first penalty of the day for either team. No, going going back, you're right, it's been a clean first quarter. So He's right, right. 751, eight cross. You got a double two. Going back to Jim Hazlitt and Phil Lindsay and that interaction, you know, that's 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 coach to player. You're gonna you're gonna get your tail ripped, and they're gonna come and they're gonna put their arm around you, and they're gonna tell you they love you because they do, they care. What are you? What's that? Second and fourteen. McClendon. He's gonna air it out. And overthrows everybody. Threw it into double coverage, trying to find Jeff Bidette. There you go. 11, 11, 11. Even right. H fly. 89 missile. Four man. Show. Over four man. Keep the quarterback contained. Keep the quarterback contained. That's deep. Even right. H fly. 89 missile. Every defensive coordinator's worst fear. If you're going to play man-to-man -man defense, you're going to be susceptible to quarterback run. Third and 14, setting up the screen. Coming back to it is Geronimo Allison, and Seattle was ready for it. First completion of the game for Jalen McClendon, but they do not get the first down. Thompson again with the tackle. Both teams defensively. Feeling it a little bit today, not allowing any explosives, tackling well in space, forcing the opposing, opposing offense into third and long situations. Now let's remind everybody, yes, Seattle has to win this game today. If they don't get to that magic number of 34, we go to another tiebreaker decision. That's the one that gets more complicated. So even if they don't hit 34, Seattle still has a path to move on into the playoffs. Protecting and serving, man. This Carl, the stains will come out. Me. Oh, dangerous pass. Incomplete. Trying to set up VC again. But Maurice Smith was right there for Vegas. It's the second time Maurice Smith has, has been the Johnny on the spot. He's been around the football from a secondary perspective all day long today. When will this offense for Seattle get going? Hot, hot. Second and ten. Danucci slings it. And he has a completion of Juwan Green. That's a pickup of six. Trips right up. Trips right up. 881 prop divide. Here we go. Here we go. Here 881 we go. prop divide. 881 on two. Ready. Little pitch and catch on the smash route. Corner by the inside receiver. A little hitch on the outside. Let's see if Seattle can convert their first third down today. They're 0 for 3. Third and 5. Danucci pressured again. Throwing on the run. And he didn't give his receiver a chance. Incomplete. And frustration starting to mount on that Seattle sideline. Yeah, and that was the first really third manageable they've had so far here in the first half. And they cannot get the ball complete at intermediate and deep levels of the field, and they've made multiple I didn't attempts. I see what happened the line. I was watching the coverage, but the Z is the guy, if you look. He must have looked down the middle because they cut the Z loose. 
What does that mean? He's just, what he's saying is somebody came loose versus the coverage. It was the Z receiver down the middle of the field, and Beninucci just didn't happen to see him or didn't lock on it early enough. Nice luck. Both teams, three straight three and outs. Sexton fields it inside the 20, sidesteps the first, but he cannot get past anyone. John. And Stormy, that's been the magic question. Right. First half, Vegas has been great this season. Second half, different story. Love it. Bouncing it. And he gets a good gain on first down. As a reminder, with the win yesterday by St. Louis, Seattle needs to win today in order to be in the playoff scenario. Now, if they hit the magic number of 34 and keep Vegas below it, then they've clinched. Mm -hmm. If they do not, we go to a fifth tiebreaker scenario. That one gets a lot more complicated, and it could be either Seattle or St. Louis. Correct. Seattle can win and not meet that 34 NCI number threshold. 48. Neutral zone is fraction 48 defensively. Okay. Offensively yeah, or defensively. But if they don't, and the score is something else. Neutral zone and fraction. Defense number 48. Five yard penalty results in a first down. Then it moves to the fifth tiebreaker and becomes much more mathematically complicated. You see right there on the right side of your screen and really good hard count there by Jalen McClendon at quarterback. Under eight minutes to play in this first hey, half. Still no hey, score hey, here in Seattle. 33, 33. Here you go. Set up. 180. Right Hand off to Love It. Love It will cross the 35. Hey, give me this. Hunt, Hawk 48, play it. Hawk 48, play it. Hawk 48, play it. Seattle's not one of those teams defensively that's going to give you a bunch of different stuff. Hey, they're, timber, they're, timber, timber, timber. They're going to line up and they're going to play. 180, Clendon over the middle. Incomplete. Brandon Dillon had it. But as soon as he got hit, that ball popped out. Quinterio Cole with a big hit. Yeah, Cole does a nice job meeting the ball and the target at the same time. And this is a well-thrown ball by Jalen McClendon. Sticks it right on him. That's just good coverage and tight coverage. And again, we've seen that from both of these defenses have come to play here tonight. McClendon so far today at quarterback. One for Very seven, ball. four yards. Seven. What that? Third and eight. Can't get away from the rush. He'll be sacked. Tazar Skipper. Simulated pressure there at the point of attack and just a really nice job there from Seattle. Well, awesome Fayalu, number 98. You see right there working off of that block inside. And there's nowhere to go with the football and nowhere to escape either. Good contain by Seattle on defense. Another punt. Can McKnight make something happen here on this return? Dancing up the middle. And he'll be stopped shy of the 35, a 10-yard return. The XFL semifinals next weekend, Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN2. That's the South Division Championship. And then Sunday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ESPN, we've got the North Division Championship. Both are on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus, so you can watch it anywhere. You like those onesies? You're going to get Listen, one of those on, the, on your way back home? I, lo I love the onesies, especially with the hood. And you look at these Seattle fans. You look at St. Louis this week, D.C. all year long. Um, go. The fans of the XFL, you talk about buying in. Uh, I mean, they have a blast. First and 10, sidearm. Josh Gordon went up and got that one. You know, Seattle has not run the football one time since really the opening drive, right? So that's 10 straight now passes, and they haven't been able to push the ball downfield, but on two. nothing jump, to jump, set jump, up jump, explosive jump, jump. plays because they won't run it. And second and short, they got an empty backfield. Yep. Set, go! Hot, hot. 
Danucci over the middle. What a catch by Gordon. Ball comes out. It looked like Green jumped back on top of it for Seattle. We got a fumble recovery by the offense. First down. Gets the yardage. Right 89, right 89. Woo. It's just, a, again, a four-yard, four-step slant route. And really good catch. We talked about the wide catch radius for Josh Gordon, but he's got to secure that football and bring it in. Very difficult catch to make over the middle of the field, and that ball is certainly out. Very fortunate. Very fortunate. That was Keelan Kennedy poking it away. First and ten. Seattle completing. Philip Lindsay, he takes a shot. Tough way to get four yards. Excuse me, that is Jackson. Yeah, we're good. I'm good. Blake Jackson said, ain't no thing. We good. No, no. Set, go! Second and six. There's the ground game once again. T.J. Hammonds. Third down. Trips right. Trips right. 81 X slant Hawaii. Okay, no, no stay, stay, stay down. 81 X slant Hawaii. Dime. Weak slug. Dime. Weak slug. Dime. Weak slug. Let's go. Set, go! Ah! Seattle 0 for 4 on third downs today. Danucci backing up. And he will pick up the first down with his legs. Ben Danucci, aware of the coverage, saw the opening and picks up eight. Really nice job by Ben Danucci, just realizing He's going to have to evade. Once he does, there's a lot of green real estate in front of him. Get the first down, get out of bounds. Now you're in scoring position. Hold this is second, where Rod wants to challenge a holding on the edge. Left, right tackle. What are you, what, what are you challenging? All right, you hear that? Left tackle. Was... It's whoever was blocking our 23. 23. 23. Whoever's blocking 23. Blocking 23. What side was he on? What, 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 what side was on our side? They were looking for a hold on the left side. Goodbye. Come on, man. Come He's going to challenge. Okay, I'll make it up to him. He's 23, right? Vegas is challenging ruling on the field for, for potential, potential holding call. That's what he's looking for. All right, Jeff, we're looking at it. It's against his player number 23. Just want to make sure we're looking at the right place. Correct. He's looking at player number 23 that was held. Got it. So I've got good position. He's in front. 23 tries to get out. He lets him get out. I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at another shot to see if there's anything better. Yep, I'm going to my coach's end zone, which gives me the other look. Again, I just don't see any restriction. I'm gonna go to my right 25. Good hands. On 23. Okay, after review, there's no foul for holding. I don't see any restriction. Number 23 was not held, so he's going to lose his timeout and he loses the challenge. We're going to field stand up. Nope. Nope. Charge a timeout and is out of challenges for the remaining of the game. Here, Dean Blandino, our VP of officiating, working through that. Good no call. Now you lose the timeout if you're Vegas because you've now used your challenge. And I agree with Dean there. That's there. There's just no restriction, no pulling of the jersey, no oh, impediment. Hot, hot. Under three minutes here in this first half. On the ground, Charlie Tamapayal. Bro, I see it, bro, man. Picks up nine. We haven't seen the ground game much, but when they do, it works. I love it. Tomapea, who's really an H-back tight end, jack of all trades type of player, running the inside zone and gaining nine. Right. June Jones Cowboys. getting creative. Here we go. Pistol, hunt, trip strike, Cowboys. 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 
It's been balanced this drive. Six plays, they've used three rush, three pass. Hammond's now in the backfield on second and one. They give him the delayed handoff. Cuts, upended. And he's going to be marked right at that marker. Maurice Smith made the tackle for Vegas. And they're going to give him the first down. Two minutes. Right now, Seattle looking for the first points of the ball game. Two minutes to play in this first half. Setting up the screen to Gordon. Can't spin away from defenders. A short gain on first down. Picked up two. C.J. Avery with the ankle with the ankle tackle. Okay, we got spread right, F mid, 881, X fade, Y over, F true, Z9. Y over, F true, Z9. Z9 is going to be your go fade. route. Set, go! Hard, hard. Second and eight, Danucci scanning. Now we'll step up, open field up the middle. Danucci, he's in there. Touchdown, Seattle. A 14-yard touchdown run by Ben Danucci. And the Sea Dragons strike first. See Ben Danucci here. You got a simple four-man rush, and he just splits the gap right there between the center and the guard, sees the front door open. And take what the defense gives you. Playing man cover, you got your back towards the quarterback if you're a Vegas defender. Ben DiNucci knows it, and that's part of the read. He's got a progression here, here to here. Wait a minute. If I can run, on two. that's my last progression. How about the offensive line opening up the hole for DiNucci there? Yeah. Michael Mennett, Jared Thomas, those two guys. Set, go. Left guard in the center. Seattle will go for two. Fade, end zone, incomplete. Jordan VC couldn't come down with it. This is a really well thrown football. I mean, it, it really, it's the only place the ball can go. And, and, and that's a ball in professional football you got to come down with. And I think Ben DiNucci. You see the, the stat line right there. Only XFL player to lead the team in rush yards and pass yards. And there's been some good running quarterbacks. Derek King, Jordan Ta'amu at, at, at D.C. Jalen McClendon started to come into his own for Vegas running the ball. But this guy has created a ton of plays in a run and shoot style offense just by taking what the defense gives them when they're worried about dealing with this fleet of receivers. Seattle's, Seattle's got at their disposal. Thanks, Wes. I know, I know. We, talk, we talked about it, yep. So Seattle will take a 6-0 lead here. 1-16 to play here in this first half. Dominic Eberle will kick it away to the awaiting SynQ Sweeting. He will field it at the 11. Sweeting on the return of H, the first. Gets past the 30 and out of bounds. Send it down to Harry. I'm here with quarterback Ben DiNucci on that drive. You utilize your legs. You picked up a third down. You scored a touchdown. Also, you hit Josh Gordon a few times. Was it a must-needed touchdown drive? I think so, yeah. I mean, we got we got to put some points up and, and find a way to win this game. So um, we're, we're just worrying about what we can do. We win the game, let the rest take care of itself. So put put drives together and score points. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate it. All the players know what they have to do, right? I mean, that's the, the yeah. beauty of being the last game of the regular season. You know what you have to take care of. What are McClendon back on offense, somehow squeezes that in there to Geronimo Allison. How did he complete that Whoa. one? That was tight. You're, you're seeing these Seattle Super defenders squat steamer. on routes. They're, re they're just reading the eyes of the quarterback. Quick drop. They're planting and driving forward. And, oh, very fortunate right there. Thompson almost had go. a pick six hey. there. What are What's that? Second and four. Deep throw incomplete. Looking for Allison again. Chris Jones was with him step for step. See the arm strength there. He can really drive the football. This is what they're playing for. Arlington and Houston. That game is already set for Saturday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. DC is awaiting the winner. Will it be Seattle or will it be St. Louis? 
Third and four, 35 seconds to play in the half. McClendon taking off with his feet. Does not no. get there. Picks up two. It'll bring up fourth down. Nico Lelos out of Dartmouth. That's right, the Ivy Leaguer with the stop. 25 seconds, 25 seconds. Timeout, Seattle. Clock's at 25. Second charge timeout, Seattle. 30 seconds in length. Please reset the game clock to 25 seconds. I, I spoke you. to Nico before the game. Being a Dartmouth alum, I had to yep. show him some love. Hey. He said, coming from a small school, hey. I love having an opportunity yeah. like this. He played with the Giants at a, at a part-time, had a few games with the Giants, but he said, this is an opportunity. I get 60 snaps a game to continue to work, keep my dream alive, work on my craft. He goes, this has been incredible. 60 snaps a game of live professional football to be evaluated you're not going to get that in 10 snaps over four NFL preseason games, right? And it, it's just the perfect storm for future opportunities based off of on-field production. And that's that's what this is all about. It's, it's on-field tape. And what the XFL does is that it shows you you can go any path you want. There's not one path to get to the NFL. Arizosa with the punt. McKnight will let it bounce in front of him. And it'll go out of bounds. 15 seconds to play in this half. Seattle, they do have one timeout to work with. Hey, hey! Hey! That ball was just 30. Can you throw a flag? It's, 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 not a, it's not a flag, but we're they're in our ear. We're, we're, okay. we're getting How come you don't throw a flag? No, that's only oh, kickoff. Kick 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 the 35 yard line. First down. 15 seconds. So 15 seconds, Seattle with the ball on their own 35. Jim Hazlitt want that kickoff rule to apply to the punt game. It only applies when it goes into the end zone on the punt. Set, go! Hot! Hot! First and 10 with one timeout, Seattle. And Danucci hit as he threw it. That was Roberts applying the pressure. Nine seconds to play in this half. Big Ben, Z stop. Pick the Z stop and get out of bounds. Set go. Hot, hot. Second and ten. Danucci to the sideline, completes it, out of bounds is VC. Two seconds to play in the half. Picked up 22. Watch Ben Danucci, I was calling him a riverboat gambler. I just love the way he releases the ball. Fling, right out there to the sideline. Please reset the game clock to three seconds and, and puts them in a position seconds. to get a ball into the end zone here they're actually gonna go ahead and attempt a field goal that was actually the longest play of the game so far today 22 yard pickup second charge timeout vegas 30 seconds so vegas will call a timeout as dominic eberly the kicker for seattle will come on and try to add <laughs> three more points before the half he's gonna have to have an absolute missile tied to his foot. Has made the 54 yarder there. Jim Hazlitt obviously believes in it. XFL long this season is 59. This would set a new season long. This is a 61 yard attempt. Dominic Eberly have enough leg. Puts a foot into it on the way. And it is no good. With this low scoring game, that means might not hit that magic number of 34. We will tell you how to get to the fifth tiebreaker scenario after this kick. Sam Sloman kicking off. Kelvin McKnight. Oh. 
He is body slammed to the turf. So if this score holds with Seattle winning six to nothing, we go to a fifth tiebreaker scenario for the final playoff spot. You combine the ranks of all the teams in the XFL, and if this score holds, that means Seattle would move on to the playoffs. Yeah, certainly would. You see that number to the far right right there. And then again, it's the lowest ranking wins the tiebreaker. So if you're on to the fifth tiebreaker now, and we assume that magic number of 34 is not met here tonight, we'll be going back to that plenty. First and 10 for Seattle. That's Philip Lindsay, a former Bronco. And I spoke to Lindsay before the game, and I asked him about this. He said he got the call three weeks ago. And he said he's been training. He's been working for this. And he said, why not? Of course I wanted to play in the XFL. He goes, that's the best way to get into game shape. I want to prove to everybody I'm healthy. I'm still explosive. I want another shot at the NFL. Well, and there's no doubt he's explosive. When he gets the ball in space, he can make people miss. He's a natural jump cut type of back. And again, another opportunity. It's better than sitting on your sofa, right? Second and 12. Setting up the screen. That's Jacor Pearson. And Pearson will be thrown out of bounds after picking up three. C.J. Avery was there. Kathy. Trips right up. Trips oh, right God. up. Kansas special cube. It's, it's 60 on two. Kansas special <laughs> cube. You're not going to get the first down on the backside, but you may get it on a four. Set, go. June Jones telling Ben DiNucci he's probably going to get it to the top of your screen. That's the front side. He's hey. looking backside. Three-man rush on third and nine. DiNucci all kinds of time. Who's open? DiNucci directing traffic. Found his guy. How long did that play develop? Blake Jackson eventually there for the first down. A gain of 16. Like you're out with your boys and you're nine years old and you line it up in the streets, man. Hey, you go down here and you go that way and you run to the, the to the fire hydrant. I love this type of football. This is that riverboat gambling mentality I was referencing with Ben DiNucci. Now it can lead to some risky plays and some risky throws, and we've seen that with turnovers throughout the season. But then you're going to get those spectacular plays. He just finds ways to keep the play alive. Now remember what happened yesterday. 880. 880. Just what I do. Just what I do. <laughs> oh, he got that MJ <laughs> shrug let's go, let's going. Go. Uh oh. 880, 880. 880, let's go. Play. So what I was about to say, St. Louis, go. they scored 28 points in the second half to get the win yesterday. Yep. So you know when teams are back against the wall, they know they got to put up points. Let's see what Seattle can do today. Ten, if ten, they ten, could ten, do ten. that, that would get to their magic ten, number go. of 34. Danucci fakes right. He's going to air it out down the middle. Incomplete. Jacor Pearson had a chance. That was C.J. Avery in coverage again. And this ball's just slightly underthrown. Jacor Pearson had about a yard and a half on Avery. He's behind him. He, he's even and leaving. And this ball's just underthrown. See if this... That's close again. When you slow it down, it's one thing. When it's real speed, it's another. Set, go. After the incompletion, second and 10. Incomplete again. Pearson had the D all over his back. That was Deontay Anderson. I'll tell you what, I, I like the fight in this Vegas defense now. They, they are covering down. There are there are very few big windows to throw the football into. And again, we're seeing that in slow motion. I think, you know, bang, bang play. That's a good no call. Two plays in a row. Vegas also has a bunch of different new players in this secondary since both these teams played it back in week three. Third and ten. Danucci got a guy over the middle. That's Jawan Green sneaking free. It's a first down for the Sea Dragons. A gain of 30. This is all verticals, and you're just going to see the inside seam. He's going to bend it. 
I'm going to bend it in off of the hash mark right there. That ball's thrown at about 22 yards, so it can get over the linebacker level, Monday, but in Monday. front of the safety. Great hole shot there from Ben DiNucci. That was the Two, longest four, play three, today as Vegas calls timeout. Charge timeout. Vegas. First Take and ten for Seattle. Hot, hot. DiNucci fakes left. Trying to trick the D. Got him! Jacor Pearson! A 33-yard touchdown strike. Namaste. You go back to the exact same route that Ben DiNucci underthrew on the deep seam route over the middle of the field, and this time he drops it right in the bucket. He knew he missed the first one. Excellent job tracking the over-the-shoulder ball there from Jacor Pearson, who had gone into the locker room with a wrist injury, coming back, making plays. They go for two. And Gordon holds on to it. The two-point conversion is good. He beat Keelan Kennedy in coverage in Seattle. They go up 14 to nothing. Well, Anthony Beck. Let's <laughs> go. Head coach at, at St. Louis. Nervous with what he's seeing, and, and, and not just because of more points going on the board for Seattle, but with the fifth tiebreaker scenario, and we saw that the points allowed, Seattle's number one in the league. So now this is as much about scoring for Seattle. It's actually more about playing great defense and shutting out Vegas. Because if you shut out Vegas, you win that category and you likely have the tiebreaker. Big touchdown drive from Seattle, taking a 14 to nothing lead. Everly kicks it away to Sweeting. Fields from the nine. Send it down to Harry. I'm here with Mr. Touchdown Maker himself, Jacob Pearson. Same play. Same coverage. This time you guys connect. Did your eyes get wide open when you were one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker? Yeah, I already knew before the play. I told him just throw it out there. This time we're going to score. And that's what happened. We're trying to get to the playoff. You feel me? Sea Dragons, we up. Appreciate that, bro. Let's go. <laughs> the time you called it. With the score as it stands right now, Seattle's up 14 to nothing. If yep. they can keep Vegas off the board, Seattle will advance in the playoffs over St. Louis. Yeah, this is rapidly becoming more about what Seattle can do on defense. And so far, with the shutout so far, they're, they're, it's not going to necessarily matter, even though Seattle hey, seems to be battle. getting on pace. Hey, battle, uh, that battle. number of 34 points scored may not come hey, into battle. play. McClendon hands it off to Brian Burt. Man, he got pushed back as soon as he touched the rock. A loss of four. Sharif Miller, Trey Walker within there for the double team. So we've talked about tiebreaker four, and let's bring up this, this graphic again here with, with our playoff scenarios. This right here is what we're talking about. If the lowest ranking wins, and this is what Anthony Beck and his staff are, are, are concerned about, because if you end up shutting out this Vegas offense, it's not going to matter. Second and 14. McClendon over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Travis Coons, the tight end, rumbles into Seattle territory. A monster pickup, 45 yards. Hey, truth love. Jalen McClendon here just gets back, gets set. Ball comes out. I'm telling you, he's got some physical attributes that are really, really impressive. I know he's young. He's still growing, but you can see the dynamic playmaking ability with his arm and legs. 
McClendon keeps it. Throwing it deep. End zone. And he missed in Q Sweeting. He had a step on the defender. That was Antonio Brooks in coverage. And, and I think that's what Rod Whitson will tell you. It's what Coach Sherman, the offensive coordinator, will tell you is the consistent hey, accuracy. Down, 24, down, 24. It's the next in the evolution of, of Jalen McClendon's progress. One, play in and play out, being consistently accurate. The arm talent's there, the athleticism's there. He just needs to play. Before that monster play of 45 yards, Las Vegas had 32 total yards of offense. Second and 10, and it is dropped. Jeff Bidette. Jeff Bidette's been so reliable throughout the season for this offense. All of their wideouts that have come into play, particularly in the slot, have been really good. Even left, 65 for A option. Hey, even left, 65 for A option. 65 for A option. Third and ten. Here comes the blitz. McClendon had to get rid of it. Was not on the page with Matthew Sexton. Now, I'm not sure if Jalen McClendon thought that Sexton was going to pull up if that was supposed to be a curl or maybe an outbreaking route to the sideline, but clearly not on the same page. This would be a 53-yard field goal from Sam Sloman. Clean snap, kick is up. And Vegas has scored. They put three on the board here in the third quarter, a 53-yard field goal. Oh, man. What the fuck are you thinking, Matt? Hammered it. No, no shit, it's on you. It's fucking stupid. Let's go, D, let's go. Come on now, let's go. It was that 45-yard trunk play to Travis Koontz that set up the field goal. Hey. hey. And Vegas. Now a little momentum, the oh, offense starting to believe in themselves. Yep, move the ball, got past the 50-yard line, got an explosive play to Koontz down the seam. Now they gotta get they gotta get a stop here. They gotta slow down the Seattle momentum offensively because right now the, the Sea Dragons they've got some confidence and they've got some some swagger to them offensively. How about Sam Sloman tying his season long 53 yard field goal? Sloman will walk off the steps, get set to kick this one away to Kelvin McKnight. 14 to 3, Seattle leads here in this third quarter. McKnight fields from the 11. Both teams release. McKnight setting up something, gets past the 35 and eventually brought down. Keep, keep making good decisions. You're doing a hell of a job. Keep it up, all right? Let's go down and score this time. And here's the decision making he's talking about from Danucci. Yeah, good to get another shot at that downfield ball over the middle of the field that he had missed oh, previously. Play. Don't get 590, 590. Tuesday. Here's Danucci back on the field for Seattle after throwing that touchdown bomb the last drive. First down, sidearm slinging it out of bounds, incomplete. Jordan BC was the intended target. And again, that's a throw that Ben DiNucci routinely makes. And he knew it, too, at the end of the throw. Fuck. He missed one. Here we go. Cowboys on Monday. Ready? Cowboys. I'll bring it to you. I'll bring it to you. Monday, Monday. Starting to hear some of the NFL teams, Denver, Cowboys, big staple of this offense's run game. Tell both sidelines. 742 is correct. June. The clocks June. on the sideboards are not working properly. Pistol. If he moves it down to it, we'll get to it. But the Tell, clock up on top, 7.42 is good. Tell Ben he's got 16 to play clock, please. You want to change the play clock up 25? Are you good? Okay. Yes, sir. Yep, what's wrong? 
Tuesday, Tuesday. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Delayed handoff is to Hammonds. Hammonds is thrown back. Laron Stokes. Three to two. It's been tough sledding in the run game for Seattle. And gold, 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 gold. Gold. Really allowed Vegas to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. Drop. 881 on two, ready. Divide. Divide. Get a wide split, Let's Josh. Go. Force the outside release. You may be able to work it over here, too. Let's go. Just get an outside release, Josh. Hot. Seattle started 0 for 4 on, four, on third down, oh, since 3 for 3. Get off me! Jawan Green making dudes miss all over the place. First down, Seattle. That's why you heard June Jones tell Josh Gordon get the outside release because if he hadn't that quarter bit the corner would have been waiting right there for that throw instead he has to turn and come back to it Ben DiNucci has just an inch or two to sneak that ball in there. Keelan Kennedy was the guy who had a chance to bring him down oh. short of the first down. DiNucci. Hey. He'll find Blake Jackson. Seems like this offense for Seattle has a different energy here in the second half. Yeah, I think they needed to get that one explosive play to kind of blow things open, right? Get the confidence. Jump, 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 jump. Hey, Monday, Monday. And we've Monday, seen it in Danucci's body Monday, language, Monday. right? We saw him after he Monday, made the big thro throw to the sideline. He's moving all around. You know, he's just a pep in their step right now. Setting up the screen to Josh Gordon. Tripped up at the 40. Fell forward, a gain of four. You right? Literally, we don't have to. I really sense that Ben DiNucci, MJ shrug. You can <laughs> yeah, tell right. he was starting to feel it. And this offense has followed after him. Yeah, they're feeding off of his energy, his confidence. Check go! Third and short. DiNucci thought about it, backs up. Breaking free is Green! Touchdown, Seattle! A 37-yard strike. Just dancing on him in the end zone. Jawan Green showing up. See Ben DiNucci here, and he's going to just subtly slide to his left, keep his eyes downfield. Number four greens in the slot right there. He's initially running a crossing route. Now he kind of gets caught in the wash. And what he knows is that the quarterback is on the move. If he's short, he's got to go deep. The deep receiver would come back. So good communication there in, in terms of the principles of what happens when the play breaks down. And we talked about Ben DiNucci's confidence. It's an at all time high right now. Seattle will elect to go for two from the five-yard line. Set, go! Hot, hot! DiNucci looking to throw, incomplete. VC had it and dropped it. Got a pretty raucous crowd here uh, throughout the lower bowl, providing their support. Eberle with the kickoff, Sweden. Can't get to that left side. Yes, he does, but we do have a penalty flag as he just runs over Everly, the kicker. See what the penalty is. Personal foul, face mask on number 30 of the receiving team. Of the receiving team? Yes. 30? 30 white. 30 yes. white of the receiving team, so that face spot's mask. good. So we'll go half the distance from here. 30. Personal foul face mask from the spot here against the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. Personal foul face mask. Receiving team number 30. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down, Vegas. So that will negate the return. 
XFL semifinals next weekend, Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN2, and Sunday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ESPN. Both are on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus. You can watch it anywhere. Seattle starting to feel a little better about their playoff chances sure. right now. If they win, they are tied with St. Louis for the same record, 7-3. But if they keep Vegas from scoring any more, they would have the tiebreaker advantage. Pass is incomplete to the tight end, Brandon Dillon. It's just a throw you got to make right there if you're Jalen McClendon, and he will. He's just going to get better. He's going to become more comfortable. The physical attributes are there, and if you're Vegas, hey, hey, 29, 29. And, and you're looking to the future, and, 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 you're, and you're looking to the offseason, if you, if you feel as strongly about McClendon as Rod Woodson says they do, you got to build everything around his skill set. On second and ten, and handed off to Shy McKenzie. McKenzie, the third back in there, used by Vegas. He gets three. It was Nico Lelos with the stop. The live line is now up to 18 and a half. What do you think, Stormy? You like it? What do you think, Stormy? You like that? I don't. I don't hate it, but I also couldn't do it. And you know, I, I say this all the time, guys. Sometimes no bet is the best bet. Just because there are lines out there doesn't mean you have to jump in. If you don't bet, you don't lose. Exactly. Penalty flag. Six. False start. Fifty-six. False start. Offense. Number fifty-six. Five-yard penalty, third down. As Larry Williams, his second fall start of the game. Tom, it's, it's getting loud here at Lumen Field, and you can tell the offensive line having trouble hearing. They are. They're having, they're, they're having some difficulty with communication. Now they're backed up. She so got some noise behind you. A young, inexperienced quarterback trying to work through some of that. Third and 12, McClendon will take off. Seattle all game. They have been watching Jalen McClendon, not letting him any room to run up the middle. Trey Walker, Tisdale was there as well. We gave them everything. Come on, we gave them everything they got. Let's go. The fifth three and out for Vegas today as Carrizosa comes on a punt again. There's just nowhere to go in the vertical passing game right now for Vegas, so they can't get any chunk plays, which is allowing Seattle to just sit back and play the ball in front of them. Knight will call for a fair catch at the 40. The NFL draft begins in just four days, and we will have every pick once again on ESPN, along with our usual expert analysis. It's also available on NFL Network. Don't forget, ABC's coverage focuses on the prospect's journey to the draft. All three days are also live on the ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Seattle gets the ball back with a 17-point lead. 2.34 to play here in this third quarter. And this is the best starting field position for either team today. Their own 40. Danucci just carving up the defense now. Josh Gordon sitting in that zone. Just isolating big Josh Gordon, that big body on the corner route. And he's just so explosive and such a mismatch that if you're Ben Danucci, now that was an easy one because he's wide Dallas, open, but you two, right. don't have to be perfect all the time. Talked about those other NFL teams. Dallas expect to run here out of the June Jones system. Hunt, hunt. First and ten, delayed handoff. Hammonds just tripped up, falls past the inside the 45 down to the 44. Do you hear Ben DiNucci there? Oh, because he knew it was a shoelace away from maybe breaking wide open down the middle of the field. I love hearing Ben DiNucci's reactions during and after plays. 
Okay. 590 on Is two that ready. a setup yeah. play? It feels like something big is about to happen. Yeah, it may be. Again, they've tried to make some more attempts to run the ball. But go. Tighten up the box there. Maybe get some one-on-ones on downfield. Second and nine. Danucci. Crossing route. Ooh, what a tackle. Kennedy with the hit. Upended Pearson. Woo. Got that zone squat defender waiting in the boundary there. Ben Genucci throws it behind Pearson, which is in that position is a smart That's move right. to keep him away from coverage. Yeah. Doesn't prevent the smack. 81 on two ready. Seattle had been picking on Keelan Kennedy for a while. Yep. And he let out some frustration there. Let's go. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. Let's go. Third and three. Danucci backs up. Fires on the target. Another first down for Seattle to Blake Jackson. Picked up 13. Seattle just having their way right here. As you see, Blake Jackson, the number two receiver in the trip set. He's going to sit and then he's going to work inside because in these run and shoot concepts, they're navigating coverage as the play develops. They're, they're being coached to find and locate the open voids in coverage. Ben Danucci just leads the way with the throw. Final seconds here in this third quarter. Set, go! Hot, hot. Danucci looking end zone! Incomplete, Josh Gordon, and we've got plenty of penalty flags. <laughs> They are just picking on Kennedy today. Number six, DPI in the end zone. Yep. Oh, what? Pass interference. Defense, number six. The penalty occurred in the end zone. The ball be placed at the one-yard line. First goal. Pass interference. And that's all you can do to guard Josh Gordon. It ends up being a 25-yard penalty. Handoff to Phillip Lindsay. Cannot get to that corner. He will lose at least a yard or two. Brings up second and goal. Back to that empty. Yep. Why wouldn't that favor the defense if the defense knows you're going to throw it? Well, if they know you're going to throw it and they're going to come after you, because you're spread out so wide, they're going to have to show their hand prior to the snap of the ball. So it's going to give quarterbacks an indicator of if they're going to get pressured. When I mean pressure, you've got five, pro five protectors in, in, in empty. So if they bring one more than you can block, let's just say they bring six, they're going to have to show their hand on where that sixth guy is coming from. So it does simplify from a quarterback's perspective um, where to go with the football, where he's vulnerable, and then you're likely to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Opposite right, Y off. Do you need Long more goes, open field, or can you right. do it in a close goal line situation like we are here on second and I goal? I think if you get into no backs in this type of scenario, the quarterback draw is always in play, right? Because you spread everybody thin, and then you don't have really anybody right around the goal line uh, to defend. So they're ready to play again on second and goal here in this fourth quarter. Set go! Hot! Hot! Danucci, quick pass! Did he get a foot in? Touchdown! Jordan Basie! Hey! What a grab! That's a way to make a play! That's a way to make a play! Seattle in this second half. Three drives, three touchdowns. This is a great makeup play for Jordan Vesey, who had dropped two plays, including an extra point conversion. Extends, tracks the ball, elevates, but drags that foot. It looks right before his upper body hits that pylon and out of bounds. Wait for him to come back, make a play. 51 on two. JG, Josh. Seattle electing to go for two. Set, go. Hot, hot. Danucci looking to throw again over the middle. He's got his man again. Blake Jackson, two-point conversion is good. 
and Seattle is getting closer to that magic number of 34. Ben DiNucci just doing a really good job working the trips play side right here and throwing it right in the window. Trying to play zone, and, and I think that's one of the things that is so popular and, and, and been so productive with the run and shoot offense is all of the movement after the snap, finding open voids. If, if you're running in your covered, get uncovered. First half to the second half, what a jump. Seattle's put up 22 points in the second half. St. Louis yesterday put up 28 points. Both of those teams knew they got to put up points in order to make the playoffs. Seattle, six points away from the magic number of 34 hey, look at me. to clinch the final playoff yeah. spot in the XFL. Yeah. They can feel it here in Seattle. Let's go! A lot of energy here in Seattle right now and the enthusiasm and confidence. Big Mo, big momentum on the side of the orange. Sweeting will cross the 25 and will be stopped. What was said in the locker room for Seattle at half? This is a completely different team. <laughs> completely different team offensively, but you got to credit Ron Zook's group. Defensive coordinator for Jim Hazlitt and this defensive group. As this game has unfolded, it started to become very, very clear that regardless of the playoff scenarios, the defensive performance was going to probably earn them the fifth tiebreaker. McClendon with time will find his outlet. And a good run after the catch. Cam Sutton, the tight end, showing the wheels, picked up 17. Live line. Wait a minute. It is up to 25 and a half for Seattle. Yikes. Whoa. No, no, no. On X, on X. On X, on X. Tonight. 180. What's up? Empty backfield. McClendon pressured. Steps back away from it. We have a flag down the field as McClendon will get out of bounds. Holding nine, nine defense. Nine. Tack on, tack on. Holding defense, number nine. Five yard penalty be added to the end of the run. First down. That's Clarence Hicks for Seattle, charge at the penalty. Good looking, good show. Show odd 43 buzz. Show odd 43 buzz. Show odd 43 buzz. 350. So they start the clock again as they have the chain set. Hey, Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. What an atmosphere here at Lumen Field. First and ten. McClendon. Let's go. Ace right, All right 60, give me vodka. Y shallow, vodka. A check. Ace right, 60, oh, oh. Y shallow, A check. Ace right, 60, Y shallow, A check. Hey, no, no, no. Right, vodka, 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 vodka. That's got to be a hell of a play vodka. call. Are they talking about a that, celebration that, yeah. drink already? Vodka. Playoff defensive call? We still got plenty of time left here in the fourth. Here comes the blitz. Who's got it? Who's got it? It's picked off. Seattle comes away with the interception. Quinterio Cole. an interception by the defense. First down, Seattle. That is the first turnover for either team. Vodka, it worked. 
<laughs> what a great play just undercutting this route and then having the strength to pull it away. Looks like some wrestling tactics at the bottom of that one. Hot, hot. <laughs> Seattle with the ball back. Charlie Demopiao, 13 yard pickup. You know, I, w when you talk about the XFL fans, as we see Tyler Pay out here, again, the tight end doubling as a running back for Seattle, but it's not just a fan attending a, a sporting event. Like, it, it's a full blown, like, it's dressing up in costumes. You know, you, you've got your, your, your Sea Dragon snuggies there. I mean, it's, it's an event, man. It's not just sitting around and watching a game for four quarters. Handoff is to TJ Hammond. And, and I think to your point, it's embracing everything that the XFL stands for. The players have a dream to move on, maybe get to the XFL. These fans, they love that we're here in the spring. It's a gauge. And we've got football. Yep. yep. Think, about where we've been, think about where we've been this season. The <laughs> beer snake in DC. Oh. Kaka in St. Louis. <laughs> the battle next, that's uh, right. I mean, it is awesome. They packed the dome. I mean, they're here in St. Louis. And they're developing their own Instagram ah, pages for their hi. for their fan support. I love it. Second and 11. Danucci over the middle, wide open. Can't haul it in, Jacor Pearson. And what's cool about that, every stadium, every team has their own unique fan base yep. who is taking it to a next level. Ben DiNucci, did you see him jump and hop right as the ball left his hand? Because he knew it was going to be behind him, and he did not give Pearson a chance to catch that ball. And, and it's kind of what I like about Ben DiNucci is there's there's accountability with every throw. Like when he misses, he knows it, and it's on him. Look at these guys. Oh, this is great. Third and 11, Danucci scrambling again, just throws it up. <laughs> just scored it again. How about it? A 39-yard pickup, and it is a party here in Seattle. <laughs> Harry, my man, I got to bring you in here, man. I just illustrate how critical sideline awareness is when you are targeting the deep ball. We'll get Harry in in a second. Seattle continuing to drive, getting close to that magic number. Danucci will get safely out of bounds and pick up yards on first down. Anderson was the closest guy there on D. Yeah, Tom, this is a great job by Josh Gordon. We call it awareness. If you didn't have it in the meeting rooms when I played football, you got fined for it. One thing Josh Gordon definitely has, an all-pro, led the NFL in receiving yards, a Super Bowl champion, is sideline awareness. Damn, was that pretty. Put him on Dancing with the Stars with that footwork. Second and four, Danucci, scanning, picked up in the end zone. Marwin Evans with the interception and denies Seattle a chance at that magic number. For now. Hey, why are you taking me? What happened with Danucci here? I don't, number one, he came back to the middle of the field late. And a big no no at the quarterback position. Don't throw the ball late to the out or the sideline or the middle of the field. You're going to get undercut by the defender, and, and he knows it. He knows he forced it. It's a risky throw. Sometimes your confidence is at an all-time high, and you're hitting everything you throw at. The big knock on Danucci this season, the interceptions. Throws one there in the end zone. McKenzie. Now, if you're Vegas, you love the interception, but I heard some guys saying, why not just take a knee in the end zone there? Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> that's where things have been difficult for Vegas. You know, those types of situations, knowing the right call to make, certainly got to be frustrating for Rod Woodson. Here you go. 
Second and seven back to the ground. McKenzie. He will push forward. Stopped at the 10. Okay, give me a hop. Give... 11, 11. Troy left down. Sub, 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 sub. 2.4 right. Over seven, over seven, yeah. show, over seven, hey, show. Hey. Vegas has not been show. able to convert on third downs today, just one for nine. <laughs> McClendon throwing, complete. Matthew Sexton tiptoes the sideline, eventually knocked down shy of midfield. Antonio Brooks there with the tackle, but a good conversion on third down, a pickup of 37. That's almost all Sexton right here, and you see Jalen McClendon moving the pocket off the token fake. One of his better throws today, and then Sexton doing the rest, tight rope in the sideline. And to your point, finally some progress on third down for Vegas. Here you go. Set up! 180! What's that? Handoff, and Seattle knew it was coming. McKenzie was greeted by Thomas Thompson and Lelos. Lelos called his name a bunch today. It's just such an active player, splitting the gap there between the tackle and the guard. And then they've got pursued off of the edge for contain. Right call defensively versus the wrong call offensively. Have I mentioned Lelos is a Dartmouth guy? <laughs> Bingo. Second and 13, the pressure comes again. The climbing got popped. Hey, hey, one dragon, one dragon. One dragon, one dragon. One dragon, steamer, you got steamer. Steamer, yeah. Third and 13, the handoff. And McKenzie only gets one. Lelos again on the stop. Job, the defense continuing to do their job today for the Sea Dragons. They came ready to play, and, and, and I think, you know, from their perspective, they were like, we're tired of hearing about this 34 number. Let's just do our part. We're already leading the league in, in, in points allowed. We take care of business on our side. The, other, the rest of it won't matter. Carrizosa with the punt. McKnight makes a cut back midfield across the 20, and a late flag comes in. During the return, receiving team, 17, spots good. All right, half the distance from there, 17. Holding, return team, number 17. County is half the distance to the goal. First down, Seattle, timeout. Hunt! They'll have to go 92 yards for the magic number. Oh, dangerous throw. Gordon was working on Kennedy again. See, this is where this is where the clock in the XFL and the clock rules, not stopping uh, on an incomplete pass. You can take that risk if you're Seattle and still have an incompletion, and the clock still favors you. 80, 81 on two, ready. And with the way your defense is playing right now, as long as they continue to hold Vegas from scoring any more points, they're good. Correct. It, it's, it's, it's not as much about Seattle scoring points as, as it is keeping Vegas out of the end zone. Here comes the pressure. Danucci senses, steps up. What a performance from Ben Danucci today. Yeah. 
See him just stepping up right there. That's really, really a good job by the tight end there on the edge, taking on that block and creating that crease for Ben DiNucci. I think that's one of the things that's really intriguing about him as an overall prospect, uh, particularly for the NFL, is, is his athleticism is highly undervalued. DiNucci with 41 oh, yards oh, rushing oh. on the ground. Vegas as a team has 48. To Mupeau. What a load to bring down with the first down. Storm, what do you got? Well, we've talked so much today about the confidence that Ben DiNucci has, even coming off the turnover. I asked him earlier this week, when you do have instances in games where you're down or you're turning the football over, how do you always find a way to rebound? And he said, well, being confident helps. And that's what we've seen time and time again today. The finger guns, him revving up the crowd, the energy that he has after he scores. And he told me this is the most fun that he has had playing football in such a long time. He loves playing in the XFL, how it breathes new life into not only his career, but a number of players in this league. Stormer, we've heard that from so many players week after week to move payout. Charlie is toting. Pushing forward. Charlie is toting. You're not going to stop him with one guy. Charlie is toting. Charlie is toting. <laughs> yeah. Look at the big fella here. Pressing the hole, lowering Second the down. shoulder. Second down. You know, you, you, Ben DiNucci having a great time playing in this in this league. And I'll tell you what's going to happen in this league. is Let's go. Let's go. This thing gets underway for a couple of seasons. There's going to be some so stars go. emerging in this go. league that are going to become ambassadors for their teams, for their fan bases, Hi. something to build Hi. the league around. It's going to be good football as longer it goes on. A deep shot, and DiNucci's picked off drive. again. Jamar Summers. With the interception for Vegas. Getting a little greedy. We've talked about sometimes Ben DiNucci taking the risks. You love the, the spectacular plays, but then there's going to be plays like that. you got to live with them. But oftentimes when he underthrows it, it's because his footwork is, is, is not planted. It's not firm. He's such, no, we don't. No, we don't. Such a flick of the wrist thrower. That's why he's running the ball there. Oh. That's back-to-back -back interceptions for Ben DiNucci. But, you know, Tom, following up on your point, I, I agree with you 100% about where the XFL is going. It started with a dream for the owners, a dream for the players to get to the NFL. Now that we're seeing so many former NFL guys, Ben DiNucci, Philip Lindsay, Josh Gordon, the XFL is turning into a destination. This is where guys are going to want to play in the spring. McClendon pressured, throw off the mark, was looking for Sexton. Antoine Jackson right in the grill of McClendon. In essence, that last interception by Ben Anucci just ended up being a punt that flipped field position. I mean, there, there's very little risk with it. 50 dollars, 8 choice. You're on the left, though. You're on the left. Yeah, I promise. I got you. We approach the two-minute warning. And Vegas did not get the snap off in time. This is the two-minute warning. What a fast ten weeks it's been. Final two minutes here in this fourth quarter. Sexton has broken free for Vegas. Matthew Sexton. Did he get in? Did not get in. Unbelievable. <laughs> Chase down we from rule, behind. The fumble occurred. We have the rule, Dean, where the fumble occurred in the field of play went out of bounds. Should be offensive good, ball still, right? Back yep, to the spot yep, yep. The yep. It's, it's clearly fumbled short of the goal line. The one is a good spot. Perfect. Vegas ball, yep. Oh. By rule. The runner fumbled the ball at the one-yard line. Will be brought back to the spot of the one. First down, Vegas. See, what ha happened was Mikhail Wright, the chase down from behind. It still is the longest play of the season for Vegas at 84 yards, but they don't get to cap it off. Kale Wright was rolling. Yeah, I'm off. 
by Rule. Fourth down fumble. Rules apply under two minutes. The ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. First down, Vegas at the one yard line. Harry, as a receiver, do you have to get on your guy if something like that happens? What do you do coming off of a play like that? I'm sitting him down and he's never going in the game again. <laughs> Inexcusable, showboating, tuck the ball away, go in the end zone. Simple as that, fellas. All right, let's go to the command center. Dean Blandino, can you explain the rule, how that play unfolded at the end? So this is different from the NFL in college. This is the rule when you fumble it into your opponent's end zone and it goes out of bounds. Normally that's a touchback. We change that. We change that. Now the offense will retain possession when they fumble it into their opponent's end zone and it goes out of bounds. It's treated just like a fumble forward out of bounds in the field of play. So Vegas will maintain possession, but it won't be a score. It will go to the one yard line. So what, what was the line of thinking in making that shift? What did you think? made that a better option for the XFL? Well, we wanted to try it. As we think about our rules innovations, that was something our fans were telling us. They didn't like the rule that it was a touchback if the defense didn't recover. And Got we it. felt like we wanted to listen to our fans, make that change. This is the first time it's happened all year. Wow. We like that. Getting the fans involved. Dean, thank you so much for that explanation. So it'll be first and goal from the one for Vegas. McKenzie with the carry, and he does get in the end zone. Touchdown, Vipers. Shy McKenzie with a one-yard touchdown rush. Vegas, their first touchdown of the ball game. Simple, easy handoff inside here. So Vegas will elect to go for two. We don't kick extra points in the XFL. Two-point conversion try from the five-yard line. Sexton, the man in motion for Vegas. McClendon rolling out. Chased down by Lalos. Incomplete. Was looking for Sexton. And at the end of that play, there was hey, somebody hey, on that hey, sideline who the players are making sure that they're okay. As McClendon was bearing down. Man, I didn't see how it happened at the end, but I sure hope that person's okay on the sideline. Two-point conversion is no good. 28 to nine, Seattle now on top. Uh -huh. open up? A quick strike for Vegas, just three uh -huh. plays. They went 85 yards in under a minute. Yeah, did you see the shit they did today, Terrell Buckley? I mean, he, there, fuck, fake field one on four yard line, fourth and 18. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Anyway, if you want more explanation of the I got it. You know what? I got it now. Because it, Casper, uh, 19, not okay. yeah. Yes. I haven't seen it since. I don't remember seeing it. I, 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 I know. <laughs> well, I was playing. That's why, you know. You wanted access. <laughs> Jim Hazlitt having a good time with the officials today. The fans have spoken. That's what we're giving you. 130 to play here in the fourth. And a penalty flag at the end of this one. Holding, receiving team number nine. Is your spot good? Spot is good. We're going to go from the end of the play then. Okay. Behind. Holding, return team, number nine, 10-yard penalty, first down, Seattle. Let's go, a minute 25, come on, first down. In case you're wondering, even with that score by Vegas there, Nothing. Seattle is still right 
in prime position to Denver win the Denver fifth tiebreaker as things stand right now. Other side, other side, other side. If you're saddle, you all you gotta do is take care of the ball. Hot, hot. They go on the ground with Philip Lindsay. Lindsay brought down at the 21, again a four. They're letting it run out. Here we go, I got it. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. Fuck, I got it. Come on. Come on. Never mind, never mind. Opposite right, Y off. You got a headset? No. Denver Y punch on two. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Seattle. Running out the clock, Philip Lindsay picks up the first down, and that'll do it. A gain of 11. Vegas not stopping the clock. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Strong left. Strong left. Tampa on two. Ready. Tampa. Man, we got all types of onesies out here. You might have to get your pick and which one you want to get home with. Warm dragon hats. Hot, hot. Fans are chanting, we want DC. We want DC. Well, you get your wish. Seattle with a 28 to 9 win, taking care of business, and the Sea Dragons advance to the playoffs in the XFL.